Hi, it's Marco here from Academy, and in this video, I will show you how to build a simple project where we will learn how to connect your ESP32 port to the web and also control it from anywhere in the world. So as a simple project, we'll connect an LED to your board and see how to control that from anywhere in the world using the free software called iREST. So we'll see all of that in the video. We'll start by uh, seeing how to uh, connect everything together. Then we'll see how to configure the board. And finally, we'll see how to actually uh, control your project from anywhere in the world and see the project in action. So right now, we are going to go straight to my computer and I will first show you how to actually connect all the components together for this project. Okay, so first, let's see what we actually need to build this project. So first, you will need an ESP32 board. Here, I'm using the one that I got in a kit uh, called the Freenove kit. It's a pretty standard ESP32 board. Of course, you can use any board that you want on the market as long as it's compatible uh, with platform I.O. that we'll see later. But that's the case with most of the ESP board you will find on the market at the moment. Then you will also need an LED. So I use just a simple red LED here. You will need a resistor. I'm using a 220 ohm resistors, a bunch of jumper wires, just two here, and also uh, a breadboard to actually make all the connections. So here I'm using a uh, an extension of the board for the breadboard because I got that in this kit. Uh, it just made it very easy for me to actually show you how it's all connected, but that's of course not mandatory. You can just put directly the board on the breadboard that you want. Now let's see how to connect everything. So first place the ESP32 board right on your breadboard. After that, place the resistor and the LED just connected to the resistor. So make sure to connect the longest pin of the LED to the resistor. Next, place a jumper wire coming from uh, pin number five of the board to the other three pin of the resistor. And finally, connect the ground of the board to the other three pin of the LED. And here, your project is completely uh, assembled. You just need, of course, to connect the project via a USB cable to your computer. Okay, so the first step, uh, if you don't have an iREST account yet, so iREST is the framework we'll use to actually control our ESP32 chip from anywhere in the world. It's completely free, and that's something I developed and that I will use here to actually control our board. So if you don't have an account yet, it's very easy. Just click on this button here, create a free account on the ARS.io website. You will be able to create an account in no time. And then you just need to go to uh, dashboard.ars.io. And here you will find a section called API keys and you can actually find your key over there. So that will allow you to actually make sure that you are controlling your device uh, and we'll see how to actually add that to the code in a moment to make sure that your device is turned into your account. So once you have this API key, you can actually close this and we'll see how to actually configure the board. So now this is the code. Don't worry, uh, I put all the code uh, in the link just below the video so we'll find everything, just copy and paste that and use it to configure your ESP board. In terms of how to configure the board. I created a separate video for that that really shows you how to uh, install everything. Here, just make sure to actually uh, have a platform IO, which is a software that I use to actually configure all the ESP board because it's really easy to use as we'll see in a moment. So make sure to have a Visual Studio Code installed. I will also put the link just below the video and then install platform IO using the instruction on their website. I'll put the link to that as well. Once that is done um, and that you have this code, you will need to install two libraries. So I will show you to do that right now. So you can just go over here in libraries and look for the iREST library. So this is the library that will allow you to actually connect your board to the iREST cloud and you also need the pubsub client library. So just type pubsub and you should find it. Let's type 
pub sub client maybe. And here is a library that you need to install as well to actually connect uh, a REST to the cloud. So make sure to install those two libraries is very easy to do using uh, platform IO. Once this is done, uh, just go over here to boards and you actually need to install the definitions of your board. So platform IO actually knows how to configure your board. So this completely depends uh, on which board you are using. So here uh, I'm using this ESP32 board from uh, Freenove. So that's the board I'm using, but of course you might use another one. So you can just type in ESP32 and you will see all the boards that are basically supported uh, by Platform.io and you can just click on install and it will actually be uh, inside your project and you will be able to configure this board using Platform.io. That being said, I will go back to the code here and show you what you need to modify inside this code to actually be able to uh, control your board. The first thing is that you need to put your API key. This is just here. You need to put what you find just before on the arrest.io website and paste it over there over my key here. Next, you need to actually set your Wi-Fi parameters. That will allow you to um, make your board connect to the right Wi-Fi. So make sure to change uh, the SSID here of your Wi-Fi and also set the password of your Wi-Fi network. The rest, you can leave pretty much the same. You can give a name to your device. I just call it ESP32, but that's not uh, important here. We can control our board without this. Once this is done, just save it. Uh, make sure that you have the right board configured for your project. So this has been basically set when you actually created a project. So if you didn't create a project yet, make sure to do it. Paste the code in there and make sure that, that you have the same board as the one you're actually using uh, on your project. So once this is done, click on this button here. That will basically uh, compile all the projects and you need to make sure that there is actually no uh, errors at this point. And once this is done, just make sure um, to press on this button here. That will basically upload the code to your board. Upload and you should see actually the progress here. And right now my board is actually blinking orange, meaning that the code is being uploaded to the board. And once this is done, uh, my project will be ready and we'll see inside this terminal uh, the output of the board. So that's not been done. And you can see that it was straight fast, but you have the Wi-Fi that's been connected and also it attempted to connect to the IREST uh, server and I have the confirmation message that it is actually connected now to the IREST server. We can actually check it. We'll just go back quickly to our dashboard. Uh, so if you remember, we'll go to dashboard.irs.io and you can see now that this device here is actually green, meaning that it's connected to the IREST dashboard. So now we can close that and we'll now see how to actually control our device from anywhere in the world. Okay, so we are now going to try the project. So I will just uh, open Postman here, which will allow me to do some uh, requests to the AREST API. Of course, you don't need this um, specifically. You can also just use a web browser to do all of that. So first we'll go uh, over here and I will type uh, the address. So it's basically cloud.rs.io, that's the main address. That's the ID of my device. And there I will type in the command um, that I want to send. So for now, I will just type in uh, ID, which is basically a command that is used just to query if the board is actually uh, connected to the IRS network. So here I also pass the key, which is uh, basically linking the device to my account and making sure that I actually have the right to uh, control this specific device. And I will click on send. So as you see, I got an answer here uh, saying that my device is indeed connected so I can move on to the next step. 
Now I need to actually set this pin number five, where my LED is pointed to, uh, to an output. So for that, I will just type in mode five for pin number five and O for output. I will click on that. And I will get the confirmation right away that pin D5 has been set to be an output. And now the moment uh, that it's most important, we'll use the digital command on this device. And I will send a one, which means I want a high state on this pin. And you will see on the video that uh, this pin should uh, now be activated and the AD will therefore light up. Just click and you can see that instantly nearly the LED went on. And remember this, I'm doing it from my web browser and I can basically do that from anywhere in the world, right? I don't have to be in the same local uh, Wi-Fi network as my device, as my ESP32. It can be from anywhere. Let's just play with that a little more. I will put again a zero, which instantly turned the LED off. And I will try it again just by putting a one here and that just set it to one. So what we did here is we managed to connect an ESP32 chip to the cloud, to the IRS cloud. And with that, we can control it from anywhere in the world. Of course, you can now use that to control all the devices and LEDs, proper relays and any other device you want to control using this ESP chip. All right, so this is already the end of this video. I really hope that you enjoyed it. So if you want to learn more about the ESP32, about the Internet of Things, make sure to check the resources that I just put below the video. You will, for example, find my guide about the ESP32, and you will also find more tutorials on my site. That being said, if you have any questions or comments about how to use this tutorial, about uh, how to actually make it, how to make other projects, don't hesitate to leave those comments below the video. That being said, thank you again for watching this video and I will see you in the next one.